Good morning. We welcome you this morning on this Mother's Day. We are so glad that you're here as we celebrate the gift of our mothers today. Uh, all through the service, we will be uh, thanking our mothers for their many gifts to us, and we are so happy to be able to have a day to celebrate that every year. I uh, just wanted to mention uh, one thing by way of announcement. Uh, in your bulletin, again, just like last week, is uh, the insert about our special Mother's and Father's Day offering. Uh, this is, uh, we are going to be giving a special gift uh, to the Methodist retirement communities. Uh, this is a, a mission that the, our church and conference have uh, supported for years. Uh, you'll see on the back of the insert, there are, I believe, nine facilities in the, in the East Texas area, starting down in Galveston, going up to Texarkana, uh, that are Methodist retirement communities. And the reason we want to support them this year is many of you know nursing homes have really been hit the hardest of almost anybody through this COVID process. And... Uh, one thing that Methodist Retirement Community does is once a person is a resident, they make a promise that they will never ask them to leave because of finances. And so last year, uh, 2020, was a very difficult year for many with their finances. Some, because of age, just outlived their finances. Others that had family members that were helping to support them uh, in these retirement homes, lost their jobs, the family members did, and uh, which made it difficult, but Methodist Retirement Communities has what they call a covenant fund. And this fund is specifically designed to make sure that every resident uh, has the money to stay uh, for the, literally for the rest of their lives. So the, last year they spent 
over $2 million from the Covenant Fund to help support residents who didn't have the finances to continue. So we want to help replenish the Covenant Fund so that uh, the seniors in our Methodist retirement communities can continue to stay with the love and support of um, our church as well as many churches across our conference. So uh, if you would like to give, um, just put on your check either MRC, which is Methodist Retirement Communities, Covenant Fund, uh, seniors, whatever you want to put on there, just so we'll know on the memo line, just so we'll know what your gift is for. So we appreciate your support and we are happy to be able to uh, help out uh, those in need in this way. Okay, I think that's all I have by way of announcement, so I'll turn it over to Stephanie. We do have a few announcements in your bulletin. If you look, we have several meetings coming up, the trustee meeting, the church council meeting, and of course the meeting for the 100th anniversary of our church. Um, also, there's been a change for the food that is needed for the Warren Food Bank. Um, this month, the month of May, we're uh, collecting mac and cheese. So uh, the food bank needs mac and cheese. Also, take a look at the upcoming events. We want to make sure everybody is here for those Sundays to help us celebrate. So do we have any other announcements? Any other announcements? At this time, we will need the call for preparation. Sing praises to God, all you things. And give thanks to God's holy name. We exalt you, O God, for you have restored us to life. Our souls cannot be silent. We give thanks to you forever. Let's bow together for a moment of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, a special day as we celebrate our mothers and their special gifts to us. We thank you and praise you for this opportunity to remember and celebrate them today. We thank you for this worship service and everything we do. May Jesus Christ receive all the honor and the glory and the praise. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning for the beauty, uh, we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4 together. Let us stand as we sing.
nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's bow together for prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for another wonderful opportunity to join together as the body of Christ in this place and come into your presence in prayer. We recognize that we are not worthy of your amazing love for us. So we humbly come before your throne. We confess to you all of our sins. We ask for your forgiveness. Cleanse us in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Prepare our hearts to be the disciples that you've called us to be. And Lord, our hearts are a burden this morning for those in need among us, for those requests spoken here, as well as the unspoken requests on our hearts and those listed in our bulletin. We ask that you would bring healing, comfort, and peace to your people today. We thank you that you are our great physician. You know and understand these needs even before we bring them before your throne. Your Holy Spirit is already at work moving among us, touching and healing hearts and lives. We also thank you for the many answers to prayer that we have experienced as individuals and together as a church. We thank you for your hand of love and protection and healing upon us. We also are very thankful this morning for our mothers, the opportunity to celebrate their gifts of love to us. We give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. And now as Jesus taught his disciples, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is that time in our service when we uh, celebrate our tithes and offerings and our opportunity to give. Uh, again, just a reminder for those of you that are viewing from home, a couple options are still available, and we uh, want you to consider uh, continuing to give. So many of you have been so faithful in giving during this last year, these difficult times, and we appreciate your love and your faithfulness. Let's bow together for prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for all your many blessings upon us. You walk with us moment by moment, day by day, and you provide for our every need, and we are so very thankful. So we thank you now for this opportunity to give back to you. Bless our tithes and offerings. Use them to bring honor and glory to our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Let us stand together for the doxology. Please remain standing for our hymn of praise. And every year we like to do this. We take the hymn, Faith of Our Fathers, and we change the word to mothers when we celebrate our mothers with our hymn this morning. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3 together. Faith of Our Mothers.
We will continue with our Mother's Day celebration with the litany for Mother's Day. It's printed in your bulletin, and so it's a responsive reading, and we will follow along. Mothers come in many different forms, and today we celebrate them all. Thank God, God for our mothers. mothers. Everyone here is either a son or a daughter. Thank God for my mother. For those women who have joined God in heaven and whom we miss dearly here on earth. The mothers of the past. For every woman who is working day and night to raise her children right now. Thank God for the mothers of the day. For all the women who are expecting but aren't quite mothers yet. Thank God for the soon-to-be mothers. For the women who took the other children through adoption and foster care. Thank God for those. For those women who have lost a child to death and must carry on. Thank God for the mothers who are so strong. For all the women who have sexually wanted to have children of their own, but chose instead to mother every one else. Thank God for the mothers and spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the women who have influenced our lives in so many ways. We pray that we will honor them in everything we do. Amen. I just wanted to take a moment to uh, thank all of our mothers here, recognize them for their love and faithful service. And um, as we said in, in our litany just a moment ago, there are many who among us who have uh, served as mothers even though they don't have children of their own. They've reached out their hand of love in special ways to many around them, and we celebrate them today as well. Uh, I hope everybody got their uh, mothers, got their uh, pen set and bookmark. If not, raise your hand. The ushers would be happy to bring you one. But we are so very blessed to have you with us here this morning as we celebrate Mother's Day. I just wanted to conclude with a poem, A Mother's Love. A mother's love is something that no one can explain. It is made of deep devotion and of sacrifice and pain. It is endless and unselfish and enduring come what may, for nothing can destroy it or take that love away. It is patient and forgiving when all others are forsaking and it never fails or falters, even though the heart is breaking. It believes beyond believing when the world around condemns, and it glows with all the beauty of the rarest, brightest gem. It is far beyond defining. It defies all explanation. And it still remains a secret, like the mysteries of creation. A many splendored miracle man cannot understand, and another wondrous evidence of God's tender, guiding hand. Amen. At this time, if you'll stand for the reading of the scripture. Our scripture reading today comes from the New Testament is found in the book of John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, 
so that the Father will give you whatever you ask Him in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. May be seated. Let's bow together for a moment of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your word. Open our spiritual eyes and ears to see and hear your truth for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends come in all shapes and sizes. Some are so close that they share life's secrets together. Other friends, you might say, share life's stage together. I'm going to tell you a story about three friends and see if you can guess which category they fall in. Three friends were having lunch together. Jack Benny, George Burns, and Edgar Bergen. And Edgar Bergen, if you don't know, made his fame in vaudeville. If you remember, Jack Benny had a reputation for being a pinch penny, to say the least. And George Burns always said that he had a reach impediment when it came to picking up the bill off the table. So George was immediately surprised when Jack Benny asked for the check. On the way out, Burns complimented Jack Benny by saying, that was good of you to ask for the check, to which Jack Benny replied, I didn't ask for that check, and that's the last time I'll have lunch with a ventriloquist. Well, this morning's scriptures made me think a lot about friendship and love. It made me think about my whole process of choosing friends. Now, I'll have to admit, I didn't really have a best friend when I was growing up. I had lots of friends, but never a best friend. And I'm not sure why that happened in my life exactly. I do know some of the ingredients. Uh, both my parents were the youngest child in their family. In fact, both of them came along very late in their parents' lives, and you might say both of them may have been oops babies. But because of that, because my parents were so much younger than their siblings, my closest uh, uh, cousins were much older than I was. In fact, right now, I have, I have multiple cousins that are in their 90s. So actually, my cousins were more, were closer to my parents' age than they were to me. And my, both of my, all of my grandparents had passed away by the time I was 10 years old. So I grew up not really having close relatives, and I don't know if that had anything to do with it or not. But another ingredient, I graduated from a high school of approximately 3,000 students. And even though I loved to play sports, I was good at a lot of sports, but not really good. Not really good enough to get on any of uh, the school sports teams. I was pretty smart, but not real smart. So I didn't, also didn't actually travel in the group of uh, eggheads or nerds, whatever word you want to use. But I was happy growing up, and I liked that feeling of kind of flying under the radar. I wasn't known to be in either group, and therefore, when issues arose, I wasn't associated with them, so that was good. Now, my brother, on the other hand, now he's a year younger than I am, he's the person whose picture you see in the dictionary when you look up the word nerd. He is right there. He is all over it. He just this year retired uh, from his job as a geophysicist. And so all through school, I was kind of 
under my brother's shadow when it came to uh, grades and all the things he participated in. He got a, a full ride National Merit Scholarship to a expensive engineering school in New York because of his brain. And I wasn't even anywhere near close to being able to do that. So, but there is one thing that I happily take credit for when it comes to my brother and his nerdy friends. When they came time for them to play sports, now they didn't play in high school athletics, but you know, they would enjoy trying to get into a pickup game of football or basketball or baseball. Well, when his friends showed up, they either were the last ones to get picked or didn't get picked at all when it came to pickup games of any kind. And uh, usually, if they did get to play at all, they were picked on and just tormented more than you would believe. So I kind of took it upon myself to help my brother and his friends play some sports where, uh, where I would work at getting the kids there to play that were basically all in the same kind of nerdy category. And uh, they would get to play sports uh, and not get picked on for their nerdiness. But um, all the way through life, and then even in my adulthood, when I became a Methodist preacher, we do what we call uh, itinerant preaching, in other words, we move from place to place at the behest of our bishop. So that was another kind of impediment to me having long-lasting best friend relationships because I didn't stay anywhere very long as an adult, ended up moving on, and therefore I did make some wonderful friends along the way, but none that I would consider close friends, and most of them haven't talked to in years. So, going through life, I didn't really have a best friend until, unexpectedly, I came across a best friend that I wasn't expecting to have, and that's my wife, Renee. That was a relationship that I wasn't looking for a best friend when I got married, and for a number of reasons. Number one, I never had one before, so I wasn't really looking for one. But immediately, she began to teach me what real friendship is all about. You know, another reason why I didn't really consider her best friend material when I got married was because she was a girl. And I was looking for a guy best friend. I mean, that's what a best friend's supposed to be. So uh, that kind of took me by surprise. But she always seemed to know what I needed when I needed it. And I feel very blessed to say that because I do know plenty of couples who don't think of their spouse as their best friend. Renee introduced me to a relationship that I discovered I really wanted and needed and desired for myself, but I didn't know it. Once I discovered that kind of friendship, I now realize I can't live without it. Listen <clears throat> to how Jesus describes his friendship with us in verses 13 to 15 from our scripture. <clears throat> no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. One of the true gifts of being a mother is the gift of friendship. Mothers and wives have an opportunity to develop friendships that only their place in the world of being a wife or a mother gives them the opportunity to share. Let me tell you a story that I think uh, very nicely sums it up. A couple was moving across the country and they decided 
to drive both their cars across country. Their eight-year-old son, Nathan, was a little worried about having two their parents in different cars as they traveled all the way across the country. How will we keep from getting separated, Dad? We'll drive slowly. One car will follow the other. But what if we do get separated? Nathan persisted. Well, then I guess we'll never see each other again, Dad joked. Nathan quickly answered, then I'm riding with Mom. So there's a, a good, discreet definition of friendship from a mother. The other important ingredient in our scripture this morning, along with Jesus being our friend, is the whole concept of love. And I have preached many, many, many Mother's Day sermons on the mother's love. Moms have an amazing capacity to love and recognize the best in their children, even when others cannot. And that's what, what verse 12 is all about. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Mothers have that special capacity to understand what that scripture means. To be able to love because they are loved. A mother's love is often unconditional. And their love is used to teach us how to love, even when loving is difficult. Now at this point, I was going to insert some stories about difficult people to love in my life. And I thought, well, I don't want to put a damper on, uh, on this Mother's Day sermon this morning, so I won't bore you with my miserable details. But I think most of us have had people, one or probably more than one, person in our lives that were difficult, if not seemingly impossible, to love. That just is part of living our lives in this world. And yet mothers have a special capacity to love when men can't or won't, or don't. And I think that is one of the most amazing characteristics of a mother and her love, her ability to see beyond the current circumstances and to reach out in love. While we were yet helpless, the Apostle Paul tells us, Christ died for the ungodly. Why, one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man one will dare to even die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Literally, the cross of Christ falls like a bridge across the bottomless canyon that is our sin and causes our separation from God. The cross and the resurrection combine to illustrate and demonstrate God's great love for us. Love and friendship from our scripture this morning is truly what life is all about. God created this world so that he would have people that he could love as we see from this whole passage in John chapter 15. And he wants to love us not as servants, but as friends. God sent his only begotten son to die on the cross because of love. When one day we are gathered around God's throne with all those we love, we will discover that the final payoff for living is truly love. Today, as you leave this place, I hope you will be determined to live a life of love and friendship so that you might perfectly fulfill the commandments of Jesus Christ and take a good lesson learned from our mothers that have taught us 
so much about both of those things. Let's bow together for a moment of prayer. Lord, we thank you this morning for your amazing love, your ability to love us in the middle of our sin, your willingness to die even though we are still breaking your laws and your rules constantly. We thank you for that amazing love, and we thank you for the love that you have demonstrated to us through our mother all along the way. We thank you and praise you for this opportunity today to remember and celebrate their love and friendship to us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. As we close our service this morning, our closing hymn and hymn of invitation is Where He Leads Me I Will Follow. Let us stand together as we sing just the first verse. Amen. As we close our service, uh, just a couple of things. I wanted to mention something I missed at the beginning of the service, that our service and altar flowers are dedicated to Claire Marie Nyland, given by her daughter, Linda Hayes. I uh, also wanted to mention that uh, we are continuing with our Sunday school program. If you would like to uh, join your Sunday school class for about 20 minutes, uh, at the beginning of our Sunday school hour and then be dismissed to come back in here for the Sunday school lesson. We would love to have you join us uh, in any of those classes. Uh, it would be a blessing to have you come. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day, and you'll be dismissed uh, uh, by the usher coming down the aisle.